So good morning. Today we'll be starting with the first topic of SEM5, that is sex determination. And the references that I have taken for sex determination comes from Russell. The books I've referred, Klug and Cummings, Benjamin Pierce and Bruce Alberts. Now, when we are talking about, just a second, when we are talking about transcription, since we are moving on to sex determination, and sex determination is controlled by production of a number of proteins. So this is just a recapitulation of what you did in your SEM1. So when we think of a transcription unit, what do we know? We know that the two strands of DNA separate, And one of the strands acts as the sense strand and the other the antisense strand or the non-coding strand. Taking the non-coding strand as the template, the sense strand is copied. So we get a copy of the primary RNA transcript and the primary RNA transcript then moves forward to give us the product mature length polypeptide. So that is how from a DNA, we get a product in form of a protein. And if you remember, I had said that when a sequence of DNA is giving a, a product as a protein, those DNAs or those genes are known as structural genes. Now, when we are moving on to chromosomal nomenclature, you people are all aware of how the chromosome is named. So based on the centromere, taking it as the pivotal point, we are having two arms. One arm is known as the P arm, which is the P arm. The short arm is the P arm. The word P comes from, and the name P comes from the word petite. So the short arm is the P arm, and the long arm is the Q arm. And the P, each arm, as you can see, can be divided further into regions, for example, in this picture, it has been shown that the P arm has been divided into region one and region two, and further, each region can be divided into bands. As you can see, region one of the P arm has been divided into five bands, as well as region two of the P arm has been divided into two bands. So that was just a recapitulation of what we had earlier done. Now, coming to the model of today's topic, since we are going to study sex determination in Drosophila. So this is briefly the life cycle of Drosophila. It starts with zero hours when the eggs are hatched. And as you can see, the Drosophila eggs develops into a hollow cylinder of cells in two hours. From there, in five to eight hours, few segments starts appearing in, in the 10th hour, within 10 hours, the embryo has shown to grow, become enlarged. And in the one day, we are getting the first larval stage, then the second larval stage, and the third larval stage. So these are the three larval stages that through which the drosophila passes. Next, we get the pupa, which undergoes metamorphosis to give us, give us the adult organism. So this is in nutshell, the life cycle of Drosophila, which is completed, as you can see, within five days. Hence, since the life cycle of this fly is very short, hence this was considered to be one of the best suitable model for any sort of genetical studies. Now, we move on to the genome of the Drosophila. So let's concentrate on this particular point. As you can see, Drosophila has four chromosomes. So this is chromosome one, chromosome two, chromosome three, just a second. So you can see this is chromosome, this is, this is the sex chromosome, chromosome one. We are having chromosome two, chromosome three, and the smallest of the lot, the chromosome four. Now chromosome two, three and four are autosomes, and chromosome one is sex chromosome. 
And you can see, if you look into the sex chromosome, the Drosophila has an X and a Y chromosome. If we consider the sex determination pattern of us humans, we all know that the presence of Y chromosome in an individual delineates the fact that that individual will become a male. Now, when we are talking about Drosophila, this fact is not true. Because even if a Y chromosome is present, it, it has been seen that Y is not the determining factor. It doesn't determine whether the fly will be a male fly or a female fly. So in case of Drosophila, Y chromosome is not the essential factor for sex determination as compared to humans where Y is the essential factor for sex determination. Long back in 1926, this was a theory proposed by Kelvin and Bridges. I'll come to his picture a few slides later on. In 1926, where he said that instead of the XY, so we know that XY is the normal pattern where Y is the determining factor for sex in case of us, for humans, Y is the determining factor. But in case of Drosophila, he said that the XY chromosomes, uh, Y chromosome is not the determining factor of uh, sex determination for Drosophila. According to him, the sex is determined by the genetic balance or ratio between the X chromosome and autosome genomes. So what does that mean? It means that we are having three types of autosomes. And if you now look at the X by A ratio, ratio of X chromosome to autosome set, each autosome has, each set has two autosomes. And for a female, in case of a female, if it's a female, we are having two X chromosome. So the X is to A ratio is equal to one. But if it is a male, then we have a XY and we are having an autosome set. So the ratio, now if you consider the ratio, so there is one X, there are two X chromosome, two autosomes. So the ratio is X is to A1. In case of, this is the case of females. In case of males, now if you see, there is one X chromosome and two sets of autosomes. So one by two. So the ratio of X is to A is equal to 0 0.5. So this is the basic concept of the genetic balance theory of sex determination that was put forward by Bridges and Kelvin. So just to recapitulate once more, what I was saying is that in case of Drosophila, as I just now told, two X and a set of autosome, there are two autosomes, the ratio is one, it's a female. Again, when we are having a male, the um, um, sex chromosomes as XY and two autosomes, the ratio is 0 0.5, that is a male. So it is the presence of the number of X to a set of autosome that actually determines the sex of the fly. Now, if we have a case such as three X and two, a set of autosome. So this is something, this is coming around three by two or 1.5. This is now becoming a meta female because the ratio is above one. Again, as I was saying, if we have a one X, there's only one X and a set of autosome, the ratio, as you can see, will become zero, uh, 0 0.5 again. So this will be a male fly. So it is the presence of the, or the ratio of the number of X chromosome present to a set of autosome that actually determines the sex of the fly in case of Drosophila. 
Now, as I just now said, so if you look into the different ratios, you can see we just now saw that the number of X chromosome to the haploid set of autosome, if the ratio is one, it is a female. Again, you can see we are having XXY, the sex chromosome complement is XXY, and we are having two sets of autosomes. So if you put XXY and two sets of autosome, again, you will see the ratio of X is to A is equal to one. So this is also a female. On the other hand, if you look into the male setup, it's XY. So it's one X to the haploid set of autosomes, two autosomes. So it is male. So when we are having a XY comp component with two autosomes, it is male. Again, XO with two sets of autosomes. Again, we are seeing it is a male fly. Any, any ratio that is falling between 1 to 0 0.5, any ratio that is falling between 1 to 0 0.5 is known as intersex. Any ratio, any value of a ratio that falls above 1, any value of ratio that falls above 1 is a metafemal. And any value of the ratio that falls below 0 0.5 is a met meta male. So this is how, in case of Drosophila, the sex is determined. Now the question automatically arises that how one X chromosome or two X chromosome and its ratio to a set of autosome actually makes the Drosophila, uh, makes us, un uh, I need to say, makes the uh, Drosophila understand that it will be a male or a female. Now, there is a molecular mechanism underlying this phenomena. We are not going to get into the molecular mechanism today, but let me get into Bridges' concept. But before moving on to Bridges' concept, since we have by now realized that a female is, when we have a female, when we have the one ratio, we have a male, when we have the 0.5 ratio, any ratio, as I said, above one is a meta female. Any ratio value which uh, below 0 0.5 is a meta male, and any value of the ratio, sorry, any value of the ratio between 1 and 0 0.5 is intersex. So, this is we have understood this about Drosophila. Now, there are basically two modes of sex determination usually observed. One is known as the protina mode. And the other is known as the ligeous mode. If you concentrate on the proteinar mode, you will see that there are the, the XX female and the male is XO. So the concept of Y is not present here. And during gamete from formation, we are getting just half, so 6A plus X. In case of male, we are getting one gamete with 6A because there is only one X. And the other gamut with 6A plus X, now you put it in the checkerboard and you will see the males are 12 autosomes plus uh, 12A plus 1X and the females are 12A plus 2X. So it is the presence of X that actually determines whether they are present in a single amount or whether they are present in a double amount actually determines the fly will be a male or a female fly. On the other hand, there is this other concept of sex determination where Y is becoming important. You look into the female, the female is 12A plus 2X, so the gamut is 6A plus X. And in case of males, we are having two categories of gametes, 6A plus Y, 6A plus X. Put it in the checkerboard and you will see that the male flies a fly where Y is used, the Y is the presence of Y is determining the sex. And in case of female, the X chromosome is determining the sex. Keep it in mind, in case of Drosophila, even though there is an Y chromosome, but the Y is not playing any role in determining the sex of the fly. It's totally the ratio of the number of X to a set of autosome that actually determines the sex of Drosophila. So this is the genic balance theory put forward by Bridges Kelvin.
1926, as I said, where he stated that the sex is determined by the genetic balance or the ratio between X chromosome and autosome genes. So he, it was he who did experimentation and after laborious experimentation, he came to the concept that the genetic ratio of X to A, one, that is one, if it is one, produces a fertile female, the ratio of X to A, be it 3X doesn't matter, 3A, be it 2X to A, but the ratio is one, then it is a female. And if the ratio of X by A is 0 0.5, then the fly becomes a male fly. So this was a concept, as I said, put forward by Bridges and Calvin. It me, it, the concept here automatically means that the expression of maleness is not controlled by Y chromosome. Again and again, I'm saying this. So the expression of maleness is not controlled by Y chromosome, but is instead localized on autosomes. The X chromosome, however, carry a female determining gene, which is known as SX cell. So I'll not be getting into the molecular mechanism where how this ratio actually switches on the female cascade is determined. Today we'll stop here. Today we will have, have we will stop with the genetic balance theory of Bridges and Kelvin. So as so, just to summarize again, the genetic balance theory. It means that the expression of maleness is not controlled. Just a second. It means that the expression of expression of maleness is not controlled by Y chromosome, but instead localized on autosome. This is an important factor. And as I was showing you the, through the different ratios that Bridges further proposed that a genic ratio of less than 0 0.5 produces infertile metamales. So it's below 0 0.5, it is infertile metamales. If the ratio lies between 0 0.5 to 1, it produces intersex with a lot of morphological and sexual abnormalities. And if there is this, if the ratio is above 1.5, then we have this sterile meta, meta female. So this was the concept that was put forward by Bridges and Calvin in 1926 and is famously known as the genic balance theory. So we come to end of today's class.